Camtasia's noise removal audio effect is an effect that I use in almost all the videos I publish on my YouTube channel. In today's video, you'll learn some quick tips on how to optimize your recording and get a great finished quality audio result after applying the noise removal effect. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Tip number one, address the ambient room noise or tone elements that you have control over before you press record. All recordings have an underlying ambient room noise or tone. Here are some things you can do. Close the doors, temporarily turn off your heating and cooling systems, add acoustic treatments to your rooms. You know, those are some of the things you can do, but things you can't control are stuff like car traffic outside, children playing, lawn mowers, dogs barking, you know, even a noisy fan that has to be on in a computer. Regardless of what's recording, you have audio effects to use in post, like noise removal and volume leveling to help improve the finished quality of your audio. Tip number two, use headphones for monitoring and tuning the sound details. When focusing on improving the audio quality in your videos, it always helps to use studio quality or professional headphones to help you monitor what you're hearing. With headphones, you're able to isolate the sound and mitigate external noise that might hinder your abilities while editing and tuning the noise reduction parameters. I use the Audio-Technica ATH M50s. They cost about 150 US. They're professional monitor headphones and I just love them. I've also used the more affordable Sony MDR7506 professional large diaphragm headphones. They're about 80 bucks US dollars. Of course, you know, the goal is to have, you know, headphones that are not co colorizing the sound. Those are just a few options. Explore what you think is appropriate for you. Here's a bonus tip. I also like to test playback output on various devices just to see how the quality comes out. And I'll sometimes check volume, volume levels outside in applications like Audacity or Adobe Audition just to see that my volume level peaks that are in Camtasia are not at clipping levels. Tip number three, garbage in, garbage out. The way to get the best sound quality output is to get a high quality source recording from the get-go. With a great source recording, there will be less to do in post. For example, adding noise removal and volume leveling to clean up the quality, thereby preserving the source recording quality. We already addressed what you can control related to your room ambiance, but there are some additional things that you can do as well, particularly <laughs> using the right mic for the right situation. For example, are you indoors? Are you outdoors? Are you in a small room or a large room? Are you standing still or are you moving around? How close is the subject to the camera and the mic? Are you with guests? Are you alone? You know, those are some variables. And then, you know, depending on what the situations are, you may need a lav or a lav wireless mic, a shotgun mic, something for the desktop. It could be also an XLR or a USB mic, an external recorder, a dynamic or a condenser mic. <sighs> The options are significant. So when there are so many elements to consider to help with your decisions on microphones, you can download my free ebook called Better Videos From Home. And in there, you'll find a section I have that is focused on audio to help you understand how to select the right microphone amongst all the other great education that's in there on backdrops, lighting, camera selection and more. Tip number four, apply and tune the noise removal effect, but preserve vocal frequencies. See what you want to do is tweak the sensitivity and amount settings to remove as much noise as possible such that the vocal frequencies don't get ruined. 
Let's look at a few quick examples. Well, I have a noise that's my uh, computer fan on low, then followed by my vocal. So let's just hear how that sounds to start. You can pretty well hear the fan noise there. And again, this is with uh, the volume leveling on uh, because I will be using that anyways. And uh, I wanted to, so, to get a, a more clear sound for you to hear. So now I'm going to apply the noise removal and let's see what happened with the default baseline, what happened here. So you can hear that there's choppiness there. And usually with the baseline, the vocal's not affected. So we'll go here. So the background is pretty quiet now and that's my computer. Okay, so now I wanna fine tune this. So one thing I can do is just first zip the amount to the end and just see how that has an impact on the, the so again, you know, we still hear the choppiness, so I, I need to increase the sensitivity. So I'm going to increase the sensitivity to 5, and let's just see how much of the noise gets removed here. Okay, let's just play. So there's still some choppiness, and let's see the quality of the vocal. So the background is pretty quiet now, and that's... So the vocal is still fine, so I'm going to try and increase the sensitivity a little more. Go to 10 and let's just see if we manage to eliminate the sound now. It's very faint. And the vocal. So the background is pretty quiet now. So the vocal is very clean. There's just a tiny bit of um, noise left on there that I can sort of hear. I'm going to increase this just a little, the amount, say maybe to about 25, and just see how that sounds. Very, very faint. And then the vocal. So the background is pretty quiet now, and that's my computer. And our vocal sounds quite good. So as you can see, you sort of find the sensitivity level and then tweak the amount around it. And I found this worked very well. The low volume computer noise pretty well was, you know, cleared out to a satisfactory level that everything sounds nice. So although that's got a pretty consistent noise and footprint, as you can see here by the waveform, it's pretty loud. So let's just see what we can do to try and help it. So first, you know, if, if I were to sit here, um, well, let's just apply the noise removal and play. As you can see, it's extremely loud still. Let's just see, increase the sensitivity to the max and the amount to the max. Let's just see what happens. So you see you have this a lot of this like artifacting weird kind of noise electronic noise and then as you can hear now there's a much noisier and there's a lot of distortion in the vocal so we can tell here that we're not going to ultimately have a perfect solution tip number five exercise caution when copying the noise removal effect this is very important because you don't want to copy a noise removal effect from one clip to another unless the recording was done in the same spot at the same time. And the reason for that is because, you know, if I have a clip of me by myself uh, and then other clips I've taken at other times with uh, someone else or they're outdoors and some are indoors, you can imagine the way you tune the noise removal won't be applicable in the same clips. But if I'm just me sitting here like I am now and I record a whole bunch of clips, then sure, you could, once you tune it, copy the effect from one clip to another and things will work fine. Wow. As you can see, there's a lot more to getting a great audio quality result for your video than just applying the noise removal audio effect in Camtasia. And please remember that if your audio sucks, people won't hang in to watch your video. If you're new to figuring out the whole audio for video game and you need help, feel free to reach out to me through Messenger or contact me through my website, gordeisman.com, and let's have a chat. See you in another video soon.